here in South Africa. Journalists writing uh, topical books have become quite fashionable, it seems. This week, we're going to sit down with the famous Max Dupree to talk about his very latest offering. We'll also talk about another political book. It's entitled The Fall of the ANC. It's controversial and highly topical as we start election season. A very warm welcome to Mags on Media. celebrate two decades of democracy in 2014, journalist turned author Max Dupree has launched his book entitled A Rumor of Spring, South Africa, 20 Years of Democracy, where he investigates the progress and lack of progress made in this country. We sat down with this outspoken writer to get a glimpse of where he thinks we stand politically and where we're heading in this watershed election year. You say at the beginning of the book that if we're to survive 2014 with our democracy intact, our future is going to be brighter. I find that a disturbing statement. Is there a danger, in your opinion, that it's not going to survive? No, not really. But, but the point I'm trying to make was that we're at a critical point. You know. Politics have been fermenting uh, and brewing since Paul Aquani, but it's especially since Marikana. And, and this kind of reckless populism is out there. Um, people really say what they, what they, what's in their hearts, and, and then they put it out very strongly. We have, we have uh, street protests, community protests, and it's always violent. So it's, it's bubbling up. Uh, there's also a crisis around uh, our president. He really has to go to court now. And we know that because the evidence against him was brought against his former financial advisor, it was accepted by a court. So if he goes to court, he probably will go to jail. We have to find a, a solution to that. Either we give him some kind of pardon or some kind of deal, or we just ask him to go and retire in Kandla. But all those things are on the table in front of us right now. Let me pick up on that phrase, reckless populism. You use it, but you also say in the book that you don't buy the comparison with the Arab Spring. In fact, that informs the title of the publication. Yes, mm. the title says, uh, A Rumor of Spring. We heard the rumor, but is it the rumor of an Arab Spring, or is it the rumor of a spring of new growth and development and hope? I'm saying it's not the Arab Spring. We had our Arab Spring in the 80s. We had Mandela's and the Clarks and Susulus who took us through that in what, looking back, was a grand settlement, a grand settlement, and a grand constitution. Even more so when we look back and we look at places like Egypt, uh, ours lasted. We have stability, that, that golden commodity that is so rare. We have it. And suddenly we hit a wobble. There's a devaluation of that golden commodity. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a wobble. We all, some of these reckless populists say, well, it was a rubbish settlement. It was a, Mandela was a sellout. And they talk very lightly about taking land and, and spilling blood, and they insult whole community groups. And that genie was let out of the bottle in, in Polokwane. And now Julius is running with it, and other people are sort of taking it. Now the, the right wing, Steve Hofmeyer and Dan Root and them, they think it's a license for them to do the same. So we need, to, we need to calm this down. But you're also saying it's containable because often reckless populism can lead to something which has greater momentum and can lead to bigger change. You're saying that there is, we, yes. we, we, we still, th that genie can be put back in the bottle maybe? Well, yeah. Yeah. we can tame Could the genie a little tame bit. Tame the genie, yeah. Because here's the difference. We have more personal freedom in, as South Africans and virtually anybody on earth. Everyone has a political party, now from the extreme left, EFF, all the way to Freedom Front and everything in between. We have trade unions, we have lobby groups, so everybody has a voice. We have a very strong constitution, we have a, 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 a strong judicial system. So if you really that upset, you have an outlet. You don't have to go and kill, you don't have to go and burn something down. You can actually go and vote or protest or write or phone a, a talk station, a radio talk station. So we have all those outlets, which 
countries in the, uh, hit by the Arab Spring didn't have. Yet you say in the book that it might be better if we had dealt with our past perhaps more equitably. This is what you yes. say. After 20 years of liberation, we haven't dealt properly with our past. The symptoms of our multiple wounds and traumas still manifest. Yes. That's a very painful and hurtful indictment. Yes. Mm. Yes, I think uh, uh, it, was, it was kind of a harsh thing for me to sit and write. But it came before me when I thought through these things. I did my research. And I stumbled upon the example of Dr. Martha Cabrera in mm. Nicaragua. Yes who had seen that nation just being devastated and kept on workshopping and it didn't work. And she discovered that it wasn't Hurricane Mitch, it was uh, the earthquake, the, the, con the, 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 the civil wars, the dictatorships, all one after the other, people never recovered. So pick that up for us. What she did was that she created fora of dialogue. Yes. Yeah. yes. We, we, she, we need to do that. She let people yeah. get, get yeah. it out. Uh, and we, we tried with the Truth Commission. Yes, we did. The Truth Commission was very quick after 94. It was 96. So we were still staggering around. We still rainbow nation stuff. Maybe we should have waited a year or two and made it much longer. Maybe if the white community bought into it more and the Afrikaans community and the former government and the former National Party bought into that process more, it could have had more of a... Didn't we have to deal with it quickly, though? Yeah, well, then we should have taken it slowly. I thought the Truth Commission exercise was fantastic, but it wasn't enough. We needed to, there was a sense we needed to tick the column and move on. No, you, no. Yeah. We, we needed yeah. more and we needed to go on. I do blame uh, also the private sector, co corporate South Africa saying, okay, so when, when, when the deal was done, you just retired and said, okay, now we have stability and a democracy and a free market system. Goodbye, we're gonna make money. Why don't you invest in your stability? Why don't you invest in, 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 in wiping out the inequality that is threatening our future? Uh, and that's very disappointing. Almost as disappointing as the ANC leadership. They became rudderless, look after themselves, run the country very badly, stole a whole lot of money, allowed um, police brutality to take hold, all those kind of things. And, and then I'm saying, but chill. We are not defined by Jacob Zuma and the truly house. And things are a whole lot better now than they were. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. I remind people. All the time. With facts mm. and statistics, mm. how much better we are. And then I say, well, and a lot of people say to me now when I criticize Jacob Zuma or the ANC, say, well, we told you. What did you expect? What did you expect when you, you pleaded for the ANC to be in the government? Easy to criticize in the rearview well, mirror, yeah. Okay, let me for, one, for once answer the question. What did I expect? And I try to put myself my, in my mind of 1989, say, what would I have thought, said then, South Africa would look like in 2013? I thought we would be much more unstable. I thought our race relations would be much worse. So one thing I keep on saying is, people say there's a lot of racial tension. How come I don't see it? We only see it when people retract into groups and then they sort of assault and defend. But on an individual basis, it's, it's, we made magnificent progress. So. I go back and I say, well, these are the things that disappointed me in the ANC. Interestingly enough, before the EFF and Julius Malema pulled out Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso out of the hat saying, well, here's our hero. Yes. I wrote this chapter on him, on Thomas Sankara, whom I met in his kitchen with a green melamine and chrome table. And we sat there and Francais Schlabert and I sang Sari Mare to him. <laughs> Because he asked, can we sing an Afrikaans folk song? <laughs> and he sang us one. To mind, yeah. And so we met him. We saw his car. He took us around. We listened to his philosophy. The EFF really shouldn't hold him up as their, as their champion. It's a different kind of thing. So I'm saying, I sat there. This is 87. And I looked at Sankara and I looked at Tabo Mbeki and Steve Tretti and all the other NC guys who were with us. And I thought to myself, surely when these guys go get into government, they will be closer to Thomas Sankara than they would be to Mobutu Sese Seke, who I had just interviewed just shortly before that. And I say in my book, sorry, I was wrong. There's no Thomas Sankara in the ANC leadership at the moment. All right, let's deviate it's from... It's all Mobutu Sese Seke. <laughs> let, let, no, let, not that bad. Let, let's deviate from the political philosophy. I want to look at some of the big issues facing us. You've been covering the big South African story for, for a long time. Um, do you think that we in the media have become victims of spin? Oh, absolutely. Mm. 
and we we led in by our nose. No, we're not victims of spin. We are cohorts. We are we aiding and abetting. How has the media allowed itself to get to that space? We took our eye off the ball. We that old cynical stuff that you and I were taught. But if a politician's mouth moves, he's lying. That's the premise. And then if he doesn't, what a pleasant surprise. And you give him a really fair deal and, and you praise the guy. You've got to be skeptical, maybe not cynical. You've got to be skeptical that if somebody is selling something, what is he not telling you? So go beyond, second sources, uh, get the background, get the background. That's one of the problems. We don't have institutional memory. Young people, bright young reporter gets a story, but he doesn't remember the background. He doesn't know what happened before. I was struck by this, by uh, the Agliotti story. And I was sitting there and said, is nobody going to remember that this Agliotti is the son of the Agliotti of the 70s, who was the biggest crook with the Nats? People should, should do more research. Yeah. There should be more of a mentorship of older guys. Yeah. Uh, a transfer, and that's generally true in our society. Is it also about energy and about commitment in this media business? I, I think perhaps of the days when, when you had Freya Wirkblatt and you know it was, it was weeks without sleep. It was, you were flying a flag. There was an objective. There was a purpose. It was maybe, adventure. Maybe, maybe adventure. Have we, have we lost the purpose in this media yes, business? Yes, yes. It's mm. our job. We need to recapture the excitement, the energy, the adventure. In fact, we need to recapture the status of the profession. When I was a kid in high school and when I was at university, the highest profession in the world was a journalist. It's all I dreamed about. And I, and I was part of a, of a universal fraternity. A calling. Yeah, I, I was, you know, the, the, uh, the, the deep throat guys. I mean, they're my colleagues. That's who we are. We've lost that. I now work for The Citizen or The Times or, or Bielt and, and I worry about my pension and when, I, when, when will I be news editor and stuff. And will I get shares? And that kind of idea of, hey man, this is, you can be a pastor, a psychologist, a criminologist, uh, a, a man of action, all in one. That's what journalism is about. The book is called A Rumor of Spring, and we'll continue our conversation with journalist and author Max Dupria in a moment. News that moves. ENCA.com